Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, a judge makes a rare decision dismissing charges for an officer involved in a deadly crash. Why the officer's duty to protect and serve played a factor. You may not see police near one local school, but your speed is still being tracked. The good thing about these is I don't have to have an officer sit with these. How these new cameras are just the first step to slow drivers down. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 6. I'm Brittany McGraw. I'm John Carlin. In a rare move today, a judge dismissed all of the charges in the case against a New River Valley police officer on trial for his role in a deadly motorcycle crash back in the summer of 2020. 10 News reporter McKinley Struther was the first journalist to report on this case and was inside the courtroom every step of the way. And McKinley, you said as the judge made his announcement, there were a lot of emotions in the courtroom. Yeah, well, you have Officer Chad Stilley, who up until today was worried that he may face 11 years behind bars. And then you have the victim's family, Michael LaCord, who has for the past year and a half carried such a heavy burden of trauma with them everywhere they go. Though surprisingly, it was the judge who seemed very emotional, moved by the gravity of the loss of life. He found himself in a tough position, ending a jury trial and making a rare move to dismiss these charges. Well, people can make this, these terrible decisions. They can decide. The court doesn't have to. But in the end, the court did decide in a case that's been all about decisions and choices. So I strike all the charges and matters are dismissed. Narrows police officer Chad Silly leaves court with charges no longer pending. These charges should have never come. There's not one piece of evidence that said what Chad Stilly did was wrong. And that was the deciding factor for the judge. What we have here in this case is undoubtedly a cataract of disaster. There was a lot presented in the three days of this jury trial, but the fact is 28-year-old Michael Accord led police on a chase down 460 in Giles County at speeds greater than 100 miles per hour. He hit Silly's patrol car near 3rd Street and died. The Commonwealth had a great deal of difficulty. It's, it's not lost on me. Commonwealth attorney Christopher Rehack wanted the jury to see Silly defied most policing policies and trainings on lethal force. In a statement, he said in part he thought a trial was appropriate and his actions were measured. He was just out there doing his job. The defense wanted the jury to see Silly was simply protecting the innocent. Silly's boss, who knows Accord's family well, agrees. I am so sorry for them, um, but that was the decision that, that Michael made, and, and, you know, we don't know why. This isn't a case about somebody on someone's neck for nine minutes. This is a case where a minivan was getting ready to turn, and he did what he did to protect those people. You saw that officer right there, emotional. Silly remains employed by the Narrows Police Department. Chief Ratcliffe told me he is leaving it up to Silly to decide when and if he'll return to the force. In studio this evening, I'm McKinley Struther, 10 News, working for you. Thank you, McKinley. More than $7,500 has been raised so far to support the family of Austin Wingo. As we first told you on Tuesday, Austin was swimming at YMCA Monday when he was found unresponsive after he was swimming. He later died at a hospital in Roanoke. If you'd like to send money to the family, you can mail it to the Kreiser Elementary School, and you can make online donations via our website, WSLS.com. Understaffing issues continue to pose a problem in nursing homes, but advocates are calling for more action. The National Consumer Voice for Quality Long-Term Care says it should be a requirement to have a registered nurse available around the clock. They say nurses should be assigned to care for about seven to eight patients a day, and facilities should gain more federal money to increase wages to retain nurses. The House has passed the Build Back Better plan to check off some of these demands, but they're calling on the Senate to include these protections. Governor-elect Glenn Youngkin wants out of a carbon reduction program that raised millions of dollars for the state. He wants to leave the regional greenhouse gas initiative, which makes power plants purchase an allowance to emit a certain amount of carbon. He says it's a burden for businesses and for ratepayers. But the environmental advocate, Terry McGuire, wants the incoming governor to consider the damage it may cause. We encourage him to reconsider, to listen to the Virginia communities who are already feeling the impacts and the cost of climate change and extreme weather. 
On the other side, Jacob Fish with Americans for Prosperity says they endorsed Junkin to get away from carbon taxes and eliminate top-down programs. And not have sort of this regional compact that we know is only going to make life more expensive for Virginians. The governor cannot use executive power alone to exit this program. It'll have to be reviewed by the Air Pollution Control Board as well. Turning now to your forecast, it is a cold day and the wind is making it feel just a little bit colder. But here's the thing, just wait for it. It is going to get warm again soon. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowitz joins us now to explain when is this warm up coming? Saturday. We're talking about record warmth possible as we begin the weekend. All is quiet here for us here on the radar at 6.05. It looks like most of us are going to stay dry here tonight. I can tell you that all of us are going to stay dry here this evening. After midnight, a stray shower cannot be ruled out in the mountains. We're we're looking at skies for the most part fair this evening. Temperatures though drop into the low to mid 30s by around 11 o'clock. Your weekend forecast showing Friday being a touch warmer than today. Highs in the middle 50s, Saturday 70 and then Sunday back down to 53. Although Saturday is very warm, we're going to have a much better chance for some beneficial rain, maybe even a couple of thunderstorms at that point. Now as we talk about the Christmas parades going on Friday evening, looks like we're going to be mostly cloudy, a stray shower is possible in the mountains. Temperatures for these Christmas parades hovering in the middle 40s in Christiansburg and also in Roanoke. For Rocky Mountain, you're in the upper 40s. John. All right, thank you, Jeff. 10 News Time Saver traffic right now. This information just into the newsroom. Drivers should be expecting delays on Route US 220 in Roanoke. VDOT says there's a multi car crash that is closing all the southbound lanes right there near the Tanglewood exit. And you are looking live right now at the traffic backup at Elm Avenue. We just heard about this again 10 minutes ago and getting more information. We're working to get that for you. Please che, uh, stay with us on air and online at WSLS.com for the latest updates. You might open the mailbox to find an unexpected ticket if you're caught speeding in a school zone. New automated cameras are going up outside of Alta Vista Combined School. The goal to slow down drivers. 10 News reporter Courtney Lockie is working for you to explain how it works. You don't need a radar gun to see that cars zip up and down Bedford Avenue. With the school being so close, police say safety is top of mind. Alta Vista speeders. Smile for the camera and then get out your checkbook. This radar is the first of its kind in central Virginia. It clocks drivers in school zones and mails them the ticket. We did a speed study and showed that uh, during the an hour time period, there would have been about 15 violations. Alta Vista Police Chief Tommy Merrick says the average speed on Bedford Avenue is 37 miles per hour. That's 12 miles over the speed limit. At 25, you're given a 10 mile grace period. But at 35, that's when the ticket goes in. It's a $100 ticket. Uh, it does not go against your driving record. Each citation is reviewed by the police department before it's sent out. It will look something like this. You have the right to fight it in court like any other ticket. For city leaders, taking action here at Alta Vista Combined School is personal. One of my classmates was killed. Now I'm um, crossing right across there. It sticks with me today. So. Um, just we don't ever want one of those to happen in this area again or anywhere. Mayor Mike Maddox hopes this will be used throughout the state. Police are already looking to install another one on Lynch Mill Road near the elementary school. We run radar as we can, but you know, the good thing about these is I don't have to have an officer sit with these. Cameras will only be on during school hours 7.30 to 8.30 in the morning and 2.30 to 3.30 in the afternoon. Police are getting ready to start trial runs with the camera. Find are going to start to be enforced on January 18th. Reporting in Alta Vista, Courtney Lockie, 10 News working for you. Nationwide supply chain issues continue to threaten school lunch programs. School divisions like Bedford County say it's getting worse. It's mainly uh, running out of breakfast options. The staffing issues for schools and then manufacturers also a part of the issue as well. School divisions are hoping the holiday break will help suppliers catch up. Bradford University announced its next president, Dr. Brett Danalowicz, will replace former president Brian Hemphill, who left the university in June. Danalowicz spent three years at Florida Atlantic University. He hopes to meet Radford students and the community in the coming months. He starts his new role on July 1st. 
Resources and new opportunities for the people of Lynchburg. How a new investment plan to give them a chance to earn higher paying jobs is coming. And we have another live look from Illuminites at Explore Park in Roanoke County. Just so many options, hundreds of thousands of lights for you to check out and just get into the holiday spirit. Coming up, Lindsay Kennett gives us another look at the dazzling display. And we know winter weather is coming, but when will the real snow get here? Like an inch of snow, right? Yes, at least it is. It's got to be an inch. So take on your local weather authority, and if you correctly guess the first snowfall in Roanoke, you'll be entered to win this Yukon fire pit. To play, you have to be a WSLS insider. You have until December 21st to sign up on WSLS.com. One organization in Lynchburg unveiled a new facility. Yeah, it's offering resources and career programs to those living in the inner city. The Jubilee Family Development Center held a ribbon cutting for a STEM center dedicated to teaching science, technology, engineering, and math. The nonprofit will host free classes to children and adults, including robotics, coding, and welding, to help them earn higher paying jobs. They raised $350,000 with the help from sponsors, including astronaut and Lynchburg native Leland Melvin. It's a chance to inspire, to give access, to give opportunity, and to we all instill that belief in that next generation of explorers. The executive director says they'll also offer a mentorship program with hope of cutting poverty and crime in the Hill City. We have breaking news just into our newsroom tonight. The Virginia Department of Health just confirmed the first case of the Omicron variant. It comes from a person living in Northwest Virginia. The person has no history of international travel, but did recently travel in the U.S. when they were exposed. So right now, health leaders say that they have identified the Omicron variant in 21 other states. We'll continue to bring you the latest information on this story as it develops. Meanwhile, Christmas is about two weeks away, and Explore Park is helping you get in the holiday spirit with its annual Illuminates Winter Walk of Lights. 10 News reporter Lindsay Kennett has been working for you, scoping out the event, trying some hot chocolate, just having a good time. Lindsay, what do people need to know before they head out to Illuminates? Well, this is just such a great spot to come celebrate the holidays from checking out these beautiful lights, like you said, to Christmas shopping, enjoying some food. But there are some things that people need to know. Already this year, there have been about 19,000 visitors here to Illuminates. And with just three weeks left, weekends and the days leading up are filling up, so you'll want to book as soon as possible. And to give you a heads up, there are no walk-ups, so you need to buy tickets ahead of time online. You'll also want to arrive about 15 minutes before your time slot to give you time to find parking. Over the river, through the woods, Christmas traditions, fantasy, and adventure are some of the themes you'll find when you visit. It's a great time for people to come out and enjoy some time with friends and family and um, enjoy the sights and sounds of the holiday season here at Illuminates. You can even help families in need by dropping off canned food donations for the Agape Center in Vinton. And you can learn more about Illuminates and find out how to get tickets and all the information you need to know before you come here on our website, WSLS.com. Reporting live at Illuminates, I'm Lindsay Kennett, 10 News working for you. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. A special hello goes out this evening to all my new friends, the sixth graders at Reed Mountain Middle School in Botetot County. I had a great time putting our forecast together with you today. Hope you did too. Thank you to Mrs. Houghton for the invitation, and we'll see you guys again real soon. Let's head on over and show you what the satellite and radar composite looks like, and you'll notice that we do have a rain-snow mix going on well north of us. That precipitation is going to stay to the north of us for now, but a better chance for a few showers will move in for us here as we head late tonight into the day tomorrow. We're tracking a weekend cold front. It's right here. This front is going to change things up for us. It's been a while since we've had a widespread rain around here. That could potentially happen for us here on Saturday. Now ahead of that front, 
we're going to turn very, very warm. Highs around 70 on Saturday. But from about 2 p.m. through about 11 p.m., this front is going to cross our neck of the woods and bring us not only the chance for rain, some of which could be heavy, but also will bring us a chance for a couple of thunderstorms. Behind that front by Sunday, we will turn cooler, but it's going to be a brief cool down. There is also the chance that a storm or two comes Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening could pack a little bit of a punch. Main threat would be damaging wind. Areas in green are under a level one or marginal risk for severe weather Saturday afternoon into early Saturday evening. Then after that little cool down on Sunday, as we look into next week, high pressure comes back into play for us. That means more sunshine for us and temperatures will start to warm back up again next week with highs in the 50s and 60s. Right now it is 40 in Roanoke, 37 in Lynchburg, 33 Hillsville and Galax. For tonight, a stray shower can't be ruled out in the mountains, otherwise mostly cloudy, pretty cold. Overnight lows 30 to 36. For tomorrow, a few showers in the mountains, otherwise warmer. Highs in the mountains in the 50s outside the mountains. 50s and lower 60s. Extended forecast showing the warmest day being Saturday, 70, cooling down Sunday to 53. Then next week we are in the 60s, Monday through Thursday, and we are dry once again, Sunday through Thursday. Brooke? And coming up in sports, it's Thursday. Get your picks in for Take On 10, and we check in with the Liberty Christian Academy Bulldogs as they head to the state championship on Saturday. And now, the Freedom First Sports Desk. State Championship Saturday is right around the corner, and Liberty Christian Academy has put together quite the undefeated season to make it to the Class 3 showdown. Since their transition from the private school ranks to the VHSL, the past six years have been quite the journey. For the senior class each year, they've continued to get one game further into the playoffs, and this season they're averaging 48 points a game. The unstoppable Bulldogs have one more shot to hoist a trophy as they take on Phoebus. We actually put the whole thing together in July, and uh, the whole plan was to win a Seminole District Championship, win a Region Championship, and then overall win a State Championship, and uh, we've done two out of three, so we're doing pretty good. The, the thing that I'm so impressed about our guys is they, they play with a consistency of effort every week, no matter who they play, um, you know, a, a lesser team, a, a higher quality team. I mean, we just show up and, and, and play hard and and um, you know, play smart, and, and hopefully we can do that one more week. LCA will take on Phoebus on Saturday at Liberty University. Kickoff is 4.30 p.m. All right, guys, time to get your picks in for Take on 10. This week, Appy has Jets over Saints. I've got the Panthers over Falcons, and Eric's got Dallas over his beloved Washington football team. Here's our Freedom First trio. Brent Jenkins taking the Browns. William Dixon with the 49ers over the Bengals. And Jeremiah Clark looking to see a win from the Cardinals. News and notes. It's been in the works for a moment, but former Clemson AD Dan Radakovich has been named the next AD at Miami. Hokies cornerback Jermaine Waller announced he is skipping the bowl game and declaring for the NFL draft. And WNBA unveils a record 36-game schedule for 2022. How cool. All right, and here is your light of the night. Y'all know skydiving. Well, have y'all ever thought about doing it at 300 miles per hour, falling 500 feet per second? Well, it's a sport, and there it is. Okay. Can we go back to um, – I like your pick this week. Panthers over the Falcons. Oh, that was for I you. totally – I support that. Except with no offensive coordinator. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll look to deliver. I yeah, put we'll it see. right there with the skydiving. <laughs> Just ahead of NBC oh, oh, Nightly oh, News oh, exclusive oh, inside the controversial clinic allowing addicts to inject illegal drugs. The number of lives workers there say they've saved in just a week. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at 7.